All right, guys, check it out. Today on American Heritage Garage, um, while we're waiting on the carb rebuild kit, and I bought a fuel pump too, just because I don't think the fuel pump in this thing's going to hold up to the modern fuel with all the alcohol and stuff in it. So even if it would still work, it's it probably wouldn't for long. So uh, while we're waiting for that stuff to come in, um, we're going to tackle the rest of the fuel system. So I'm going to pull the tank out, see how nasty that is. I have a feeling that it's not going to be real nice. Um, so we'll get that down, cleaned up, put back in. Um, probably take the fuel pump off so we can blow the lines out before we put the tank back in, make sure that's all good. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, other than that, uh, once we're done with that, we're going to jump into the brake system, uh, start working on that, see what kind of stuff we're dealing with here. Um, I got it jacked up in the air, got the wheels off so I can uh, crawl underneath here. So let's get to it. <laughs> We are up underneath the Chevy. Um, like I said, while we're waiting for the carb kit to come in and the fuel pump, I am going to mess around with the, the rest of the fuel system. Uh, so we're going to get the old fuel tank out back here. It doesn't appear to be in too terrible a shape. We'll see, I guess. Um, Got to start up here. Uh, the clamps to get the filler neck off. I have a feeling that'll be a bit of a bit of a messing around. Um, first and foremost, we're going to get some of these cobwebs off of here um i wish i would have pressure washed it but it's getting cold like i said and definitely don't feel like pressure washing it and getting super cold um not too many bolts holding this sucker in one here one here um so passenger side passenger side um the fuel line which has been soaking uh looking all the way down the edge here there's nothing and then same on the other side so uh, there's one right there actually I don't even know if they're on these corners we'll see uh, we'll get the ones I can see off and see if anything else is holding it uh, there is some rust up here I think that came from the floor there's some pretty uh, pretty soft stuff up here I'm just waiting for like a freaking monster to jump out of there uh, and then of course for the fuel gauge so uh, I'm going to take advantage also, I think, of while I got this thing jacked up in the air and just take the wheels off and dig into the, uh, the wheel cylinders and stuff just because it's a pain to get this thing jacked up. Um, I got it up on the super lifts there, the, the added uh, extra instability. So it makes it a little more risky, more fun. Um, so I bought the world's brightest light. Uh, I was at Menards, and I needed a light, and it really is the world's brightest light, so it's pretty sweet. It's only like 50 bucks. Um, anyway, I'm going to get you set up under here. You can see while we're under here, some of the some of the rust. I mean, like I said, there's not a lot, but uh, there's some. So, you know, you get a little bit of... A little bit of a little bit of this a little bit of that going on up here so hey it's 80 years old um but anyway we'll uh we'll get to it in just a second here so i'm working on getting this this filler neck off uh it's already loose here so we'll end up putting a new piece of uh hose in there we don't want we don't want uh any sort of leaks or anything like that not in the fuel system so um, yeah, we'll knock this thing off. Actually, surprisingly, I cracked it loose already, and, uh, it, uh, really wasn't that bad. I, of course, did take a minute and used a little, uh, PB blaster and a wire brush, but now I'm just getting this, holding this down here, because it's, it's, uh, the little square nuts want to spin, so we'll get some, some thread out of here and get this thing spread apart. Pretty close here, a couple more turns and call it a day. 
and we'll see if we can't uh, somehow separate it off this this filler next side here. I'm thinking that's probably pretty close to good. Um, that's hard as a rock. This isn't. But this up here has a rubber gasket that holds it. That's all you're probably supposed to slip it down is what it looks like, but oh, there, there's that. That's surprising. That smells terrible. So we'll get some big old channel locks and break that loose there. I've been pleasantly surprised with this thing so far. So hopefully we can keep that up. Too bad. Um, here's the old piece. Pretty uh, hard as a rock. Degraded pretty good on the inside. That's the side that was up against the filler neck. So now what I'm thinking is I'm going to take that filler neck out, slide it out the best I can, knock some of this stuff off, clean it all up, probably shoot it with some uh, some spray paint. And but now that that's off. Um, fuel line and we'll work on getting the bolts off. There's a couple little tabs that hold this keeper on so get those bent back and knock those loose. We are going to work on this line. As I said we uh, got it all cleaned off here. Rubbed it down. Fingers are crossed. Got my line wrench of course because better safe than sorry. This is a 9 16 All right, that's good news. That is good news. I'd like to see that. I mean, it's dry as a bone, but the line isn't twisted, so. I'm not going to pull on it too much, but we're looking good. Next, I already tried this one. I uh, got lucky, came out no problem. Uh, next one we'll try is up here, and we'll switch over to the other side. We got the two out on this side. We got the line off, and we got the um, uh, filler neck off. So now we'll uh, go get the other side and see if I can pry this thing down. We got ourselves a fuel tank. Um, it was one, two, and there's another one. There. Three bolts, that's it. Um, the one on that side had a spring. Uh, I cut this wire for the fuel sending unit because I just couldn't see what I had going on up here. So I'll uh, get this all cleaned up, take this off, reconnect it. Quick little splice, easy stuff. Um, there's still some fuel in there, so that's awesome. Um, but yeah, we were three for three, no broken bolts, no anything, a uh, bit of stuff came out. So we'll, uh, we'll get this whole thing cleaned up and double check it and run some good stuff through it. And that's, uh, that's pretty good. Actually, it's probably better that there's a little bit of gas in it. Um, it might be varnished, but that's not a big deal. Like I said, we'll run some fresh gas, shake it around, let it sit in there overnight and, and, uh, call it good. So I wanted to show you guys some of the gas. I dumped it all out, what was in the tank. Um, it's uh, That may be remnants from the first tank of gas this thing ever had 80 years ago. Uh, definitely some of the most varnished 
gasoline I've ever seen in my life and it is permeating the whole room uh, varnish gas is not my favorite smell try not to get any on you because you will smell for a long time um, this is exactly a great example of why you take the time and do stuff like this before you fire up old stuff I'm not saying you couldn't fire it up real quick give it a shot see what happens but look can't even see through it but uh, yeah, it's, this is important because you run this stuff through your fuel system and it's just no good. There's no there's no fire behind this. Uh, it's combustibility is all gone. So, you know, this is why you rebuild carbs, blow out fuel lines. Um, there's a lot of sediment in the tank. Um, so that'll be a little bit of a challenge to get out of there. You can hear it shaking around. So anyway, we're, uh, we're going to keep working on that. So day two of cleaning the tank out. Um, Ran about probably three quarters of a gallon or so of uh, gasoline just in and out of the tank, switched it around. Uh, then I let it sit overnight. And I just wanted to show you after I drained all the stuff out from today, ran some different stuff through it, shook it out a bunch. That's the sediment that was in the tank. Uh, that's probably about half of it. Um, I did a I did what you're not really supposed to do, but I really don't care at this moment because it's going to have plenty of time to dry out. But I, I filled it full of water um, after I got done with some of this gasoline, and uh, so I filled it full of water and I shook it around. Probably put about ten or fifteen, you know, ten or twelve gallons in it or so. Um, and also on the side here, the inlet or outlet, I should say, for the um where the fuel line goes completely plugged couldn't blow air in it nothing would come out um so after a while running some sea foam brake cleaner some other fuel injector cleaner stuff i got through it rodding it out with a couple different size wires i finally got it flowing um so we're doing okay um we'll just keep plugging along on the tank i'm gonna let it sit with a little more fuel in it overnight uh, for the last time and then let it dry out for a while so that's where we're at with that. Um, fuel pump will be here tomorrow. Carb kit will be here on Tuesday. Um, uh, probably going to dig into the brakes here pretty soon. So we'll see, uh, how it goes. All right, guys, there you go. Tanks out in the process of getting cleaned up. Uh, I have to say that was one of the nastiest fuel tanks I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, but thus far it doesn't look like there's any leaks. Uh, should be able to get it cleaned up, get it back in with no problem. Uh, pretty excited about that that's one less thing that uh, we don't have to spend money on because we're on a budget here and we're just trying to get this thing running and a little bit streetable um, so stick with me and uh, we'll see what's going on next uh, I got a list of stuff coming on my ears uh, stuff to do uh, so like I said hang in there keep watching keep commenting keep liking subscribing and sharing I appreciate all that stuff and until next time we'll see you out here in America